This video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. Thank you for your support. So recently Disney announced that in June, they'll be hosting Pride Night at Disneyland, which will also be the company's first official Pride event at a US park. Perfect, love the LGBT propaganda on young and impressionable children. Bring your kids to mentally ill night. That's where you'll spot all the files. And it begins with a three hour pre-party mix-in. Interesting, uh, get your monkeypox vaccine. They're inviting kids. Listen, I mean, it's just another it's example of- It's a ticketed of, event. Uh, it, of them it taking, is a ticketed it, event. Well, if you look at, at you know, Christian conservative parents, they feel like their values are not being not being respected. And, but the parks and are full, just, sir. The parks are jam-packed full, even at 100, 110, 120 bucks a ticket. Well, it's, it's costing them money without a doubt. I, like many others, was glad to see an official Pride event after years of the company tiptoeing around it. But I wasn't surprised by the backlash. And a few days ago, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis held another meeting to detail the new steps in his plan to retaliate against the company. Something that's being framed as a noble cause of limiting a corporation's power. But remember, this all started after they said something he didn't like. After DeSantis did a few things, like detailing a plan to try nullifying the deal that's his new board of their power over Disney World, referred to the Disney deal as being passed in the middle of the night, despite it having been passed at a public meeting he could have attended, and seemingly threatening to build a prison near Disney World. Yes, after all of that, <laughs> the official Disney Twitter made another tweet about the Disneyland Pride Night. The tweet got exponentially more attention than the first announcement, and many now see the timing as a response to the DeSantis comments. But let's talk about why Disney is hosting a Pride event in the first place. When is straight pride night? You know, equality. Well, it might not be straight pride, but Disney has celebrated heterosexuality many, many times before. And I'm not talking about their movies, or even that time they rewrote history by removing homosexuality from a real life story. Peter was in love. He knew that all the eligible males of St. Petersburg were at the feet of the divine soprano. You see, at first, Disneyland wasn't doing so well financially, so to make more money, Date Night was introduced in 1957. This event targeted young couples, playing up the romance and keeping the park open a few hours after its normal closing. And with that came music, most notably the Elliott Brothers Orchestra, who not only played at Date Night, but also recorded an album that features what was essentially the theme song for the event. Let's dance at Disneyland! Disney wanted to attract teenage crowds, but they also wanted to keep the quote-unquote respectable and family-friendly atmosphere that the Disney brand was known for. So a lot of the music fit that. US culture, politics, and the music scene changed a lot during Date Night's run through the early 70s. But like many parts of Disneyland, the event presented a romanticized and selective view of US culture that mainly appealed to white, straight, middle-class families and any type of expression that was outside of strict gender roles and heterosexuality was nowhere to be found. There were obviously gay people back then, but Disney, like a lot of US culture of the time, ignored them, mostly acknowledging gayness just when it was a punchline. So Disneyland had a regular event celebrating heterosexuality without saying so. And though it's unlikely that there would have been an openly gay couple at Disneyland at the time just because of how homophobic society was, we do know that from 1957 to 1985, Disneyland had a policy banning gay couples from dancing, which was removed a few years after a gay couple was evicted from the park for dancing and later sued the company. And even after that, there was another incident in 1987 where a couple was told by a security guard that touch dancing was only allowed for heterosexuals. So Date Night didn't have to say heterosexual to make it clear who it was for. And when I hear Let's Dance at Disneyland, I can't help but think about the entire context surrounding it. While Date Night was going on, the queer rights movement was becoming larger and taking up your space and labeling it became an integral part of US queer experience. And in the 90s, this would eventually come to the US parks in the form of gay days. There had already been a queer Disney fan base for a long time, but this was the moment where a lot of those fans showed up to the parks and took their space. Both the West Coast and East Coast versions of gay days have never been official events, despite allegations saying so. And I hate that I have to clarify this, but they've never involved gay orgies at Disney theme parks. But I've already talked about that. The first official Pride event happened at Disneyland Paris in 2019, 
and it's since become an annual tradition, featuring rare meet and greet characters, musical performances, and pride theming. It also introduced gender neutral restrooms for the first time in a Disney park. And that was originally limited just to the event itself, but it's now being tried out at other parts of the parks. And now that there's finally an official Pride event at one of the US parks, it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the Paris one. But it's not just anti-Disney and anti-queer groups who have been disdainful of the company's foray into Pride events and merch. Corporations at Pride have always been controversial, and that's because for many in the community, advocating for human rights isn't an invitation for businesses to make a profit, especially when many could do more to support their queer employees year-round. When talking about companies using queerness as a marketing tool, many people in the community criticize Disney. Though the company has many resources to support queer employees and has been building a more inclusive work environment over the last few decades, there has also been a dissonance between their internal and external images. For a while, Disney became known for blink and you representation that was marketed as groundbreaking, but since it was often so insignificant, it seemed like an attempt to have representation without upsetting queer folks. But in the last few years, the dissonance between internal and external has started to fade. The improved public support and better queer representation hint at a brighter future, and this Pride event is just the latest in a series of improvements. Even though Disneyland now has Sweethearts Night, which is pretty much the spiritual successor to Date Night that's not limited to heterosexuality, queer pride is an important celebration, especially in the current political landscape. So I'm glad that Disney is hosting their own version of that. And as one of the biggest companies in the world, what Disney says and celebrates does matter. But I think it would be disingenuous to say that Disney is hosting Pride just because they want to stand up for what is right. I'm not bringing this up to discredit the work of the many queer employees who have been advocating for better queer representation because it's the right thing to do. But Disney is also a for-profit company. Despite Go Woke, Go Broke, basically becoming a slogan for the current anti-Disney movement, if queer representation wasn't profitable, they probably wouldn't be doing it. And it seems like that capitalist context was what held back queer representation in the past. So I'm glad it's changing. And since it's also just the right thing to do, all the better. When I asked my subscribers what they thought of Disney hosting Pride, someone brought up a good point. Despite accusations that Disney is losing business for supporting the queer community, if they'd rather market to us and our allies than to the homophobes, that tells me something about who's got the numbers on their side. Disney influences culture, but it also reacts to it walking the line between making something unique and engineering something that's profitable is what has allowed Disney to both push the limits of various art forms while also appealing to mainstream culture and ultimately the broadest audience possible. And despite people saying that Disney is trying to force some niche agenda, I'd say that their content, even today, usually reflects mainstream society. They've changed because society has changed. And if the money of those who don't hate queer people is now worth more than appealing to bigots, well, that shows you exactly how things are different. But whenever I talk about queerness within Disney, it almost always comes from employees who took up their space anyway. They told their own stories because they wanted to. They started an employee organization because they needed to advocate for themselves. And last year, they took a stand because they knew they had to. And that's what I'm really interested in. I care about the people behind all of that, who put their talent and love into the work that they do. The people who, just like me, grew up with the beautiful art created by Disney and wanted to see themselves in it. And because of that, they sparked change. That's the real reason why Disney is hosting a Pride event. And I hope that there are many, many more to come. Take your date to Disneyland. Fireworks are great at Disneyland The sky lights up at nine each night Romantic rides in the cool moonlight We're up until the clock strikes 1 a.m. Friday and Saturday